Hey everybody, um, hopefully you've been enjoying the Path Through the Psalms chapter 80. And as you know, uh, there's one main theme that runs through it, and that's the refrain uh, that we've been looking at, restore us, O oh God. And so we have Abby Ashworth with us today. Uh, Abby's part of LifeSpring, and she's going to share a bit of her story. Um, we've got to know Abby over lockdown, so in this format right here over Zoom, and then eventually uh, met her in person as well, which has been lovely. Uh, but she's here to share a bit of her story tonight and then to talk about uh, that term restore. So, Abby, could you uh, tell us how you came to faith in Christ? May a bit of what you do, but also uh, how you came to faith in Christ. Yeah, um, so... I'll, I'll go into a little bit of what I do as I sort of talk along, really. Um, but essentially, I mean, I'd always grown up in a Royal Air Force family. There was my dad who was serving in the military, uh, married to my mother and me being the eldest of three daughters. Um, but we were grown up as, oh, brought up, sorry, as non-believers. Um, and that was all, we weren't baptised as kids. And that was always left to us to make up our own minds as adults. Um, I'd always had questions and never really known where to turn um, until I took sort of turned 19, 20, when I was looking at a career in the NHS. Um, I started my training in Cardiff, had an amazing time. Um, and again, didn't really know where to look. There was one or two good uh, sort of Christian choirs that I was a part of at university and as part of University Health Board down in Cardiff and Vale. Um, but it wasn't until I came to Basing Stoke in 2015 as a newly qualified ODP um, that stands for Operating Department Practitioner, so we work in anaesthetics and surgery. Um, wasn't until I was newly qualified doing that that I met the most wonderful anaesthetist, um, Margaret, who is now not only an anaesthetist, but is also a very great friend and, you know, an extended family member to me. Um, she prayed with me and for me after certain difficult situations at work. Um, in my personal life as well, which of course, you know, I'll go into a little bit of later on. Um, but through that, I began to see what Christianity could do for me and what the proud power of prayer and connecting with God could do. Um, and it was just incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, I was also introduced to the Alpha course, um, which some of you may know about, um, and slowly reintroduced to Life Spring Community Churches throughout lockdown. Um, now, Obviously, most of these guys had only ever seen me in a koala bear onesie and pajamas over Zoom, but slowly got to meet me in person in, well, last year now, wasn't it? May of Mar April or May of last year, I think. Um, yeah. And my faith has just grown since then. Um, it's been a journey of self discovery and, like you've said, restoration with Margaret, the church, and God by my side. Um, mm. And that's basically kind of led me to where I am today. That's wonderful. Um, so what difference has faith made in your everyday, day-to-day -day life? Um, it's made a massive difference. Um, put simply, and to keep it short and sweet, if it wasn't for me coming to faith when I did, I wouldn't have been able to do a job. Um, I wouldn't have been able to carry on working throughout the pandemic um, in pretty difficult circumstances. Mm. And I wouldn't be here today. Um, that was it. one sort of thing that springs to mind really for me is my baptism and um, the verse Josh, um, Josh 1 verse 9. Um, it brings up all of this and it just, you know, God is with you wherever you go. Um, and just to touch on it, it essentially says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. Um, the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. Um, that was again given to me by Margaret and her husband David um, and it stuck with me wherever I go um, mm. and it's made a massive difference so yeah and one that I'll treasure forever so yeah that's not going to go away. Yeah wonderful. Now like I said earlier our passage uses the word restore a lot and uh, when I was thinking about that Abby's uh, story came to my mind. So you've had some health troubles some job changes but God has restored you through it all. Can you share with us what that's felt like? And if there's any particulars where you've really felt restored by God? I've been diagnosed with intracranial hypertension, um, which in medical terminology means pseudo, um, pseudo tumor cerebri. It means that 
all of the effects you would have gotten from a brain tumor, i.e. headaches, pressure on the brain, excess fluid production, nausea, vomit, and all the nasty side effects that go with that. Um, there's no known cause for it. And at the moment, there's no known cure for it either other than medication to dampen down the side effects. Um, that was diagnosed during lockdown, just, just as I was sort of coming to the church and meeting these guys in person for the first time. Um, and again, I'll say I touched on my baptism before, but that was one particular that stands out. And actually, I'd only just had my first lung puncture and diagnosis at that point. And having Margaret by my side whilst I was being baptised was just, you know, I felt immediately restored at that point. I could hand all of my health troubles, all of my worries over to God and actually trust in him and have faith in him that it all, it all was all going to be OK at that particular moment. And of course, since then, things haven't been easy. You know, there's always ups and downs. It's the path of life. Um, but I have never once not been able to cope. Um, I've always been able to turn to prayer. I've always been able to, you know, count on my faith that I've been built up and, you know, essentially restore myself with God's help, really. Um, one particular scenario, um, I've been working on night shifts, been in A&E. Um, again, last year, working through COVID, we had this gentleman come in who had six hours beforehand been sat with his son. He'd had COVID two weeks before, so he was still sort of classed as COVID positive. But unfortunately, he'd come in cardiac arrest, not breathing. Um, and at that point, you know, there was just myself, one anaesthetist and one very junior um, critical care practitioner. Um, working in A&E because there was another arrest going on in the cupule next door so I had intubated and was trying to sort of breathe for this man while a machine was doing the compressions chest compressions for him yeah. and at that particular moment it went silent and I found myself looking up obviously whilst doing my job but looking up and praying that someone was going to hear me and just you know can we please try and make this okay not just for this gentleman, but for us and actually for his family as well. Shortly after, the staff nurse, who was a very great friend of mine through school in a and she came in and said, the, the son wants to see what you're doing. And because I was at the head end, I was in charge. And I said, yeah, but be warned it's like this. And the gentleman came in and said to me, can you just shut his eyes now and let him go? And we did. We called it. And even though it being a horrendously sad scenario at that particular moment I just felt this immediate kind of weight lifted off and I just took this massive inward breath and I just they they said to me are you okay and I was like yeah yeah I, yeah I am um but that was because I'd had that connection with God and that faith I will always draw back on that moment I'll never forget um but actually ever since then regardless of what's happened mm -hmm. what may be going on I'm on that journey with God and he'll guide me through into the right path it might not always be clear at the time but he will always be there and the power of prayer will always be there as well and that's something that I've built up throughout the last couple of years well that's brilliant well it <clears throat> that's a deep moving story uh to feel God almost physically uh with you in that kind of difficult setting yeah, um absolutely. and as we've seen in this passage uh, they are asking for God to restore them. Uh, and so it's really great to hear your stories of being restored. And we continue to pray that Abby will be restored uh, physically and that this illness will go away and that its effects will, will not be felt uh, and that she'll be fully restored to health. Um, wonderful to have you along with us tonight, Abby. Thank you so much for taking the time. You're very welcome. And uh, for sharing from your heart. And no for those of you, carrying out with the path. Uh, hopefully you'll get a lot more out of the rest of uh, what you have to read and to listen to. Take care for now.